at this point, we know how we can push changes. So pushing changes, we create an or create a remote. We create a remote repository. So on the actual remote, we create a repository. We tell Git about it. And we did that using git remote add. And then we type git push to push our changes. That's only really half the story though. What if we want to get changes that someone else has written? So we also need to fetch changes. And how we do that is typing git fetch. And then git rebase. So origin here is the name of the remote. It doesn't necessarily have to be origin. So this is how we fetch changes. Fetch gets the changes from the remote. Rebase applies them to our local copy. Remember that because Git has a full copy of the repository, when we pull it, when we fetch the changes, that updates our repository so that we have the same content as what's at the remote. However, it doesn't change our working checked out copy. We do that using rebase. So there's again it's a two step process, but it's there for a good reason. So that's how we fetch our changes. So this would make a lot more sense if we made some changes. So um we can type this. It'll ask for my oh, sorry. It didn't do anything, there was no changes. That makes sense. Let's do something a bit tricky. Let's copy dash uh let's copy this project to another copy. And we make a change. So vim readme.txt another copy changed this version. So git commit dash a testing remote server. Okay, so we've created a copy. If we if we type git log, we can see the change. Testing remote server. So we that that all works fine. Um, now let's do a push to the origin. Git push origin. Enter my password. Okay, so we've updated the origin. So this is the remote server that we've updated. Now, let's go back into our original co our original copy, some project, and type git fetch origin. Ask for my password. Now, you can see here that the master branch has changed because we've pulled in changes from the remote server. If we have a look inside our readme file, Vim readme. We can see that nothing has changed yet. That's because our repository is now up to date, but our local checked out working copy isn't. They're two different things. Try and keep that in mind. So how we do that is git rebase origin. This is saying take oh, origin slash master. This is saying Take the changes that we've got from Origin's master branch and apply them to our working copy. So now, if we have a look inside README, we have the changes that came from the other developer. And that's how we can do the central server model with Git. 
So we push changes to the server, and there's multiple developers doing this. Then we fetch from the origin and rebase to apply those changes. So that, I think, is enough for this video, really. So what did we look at? Um, we looked at creating remotes. So we created one on a flash stick. And we created a remote server. We looked at removing remotes about four times because I messed up. We looked at pushing changes to remotes. And we did that with git push. And we looked at fetching and applying changes from remotes. And we did that with two commands. The first one was git fetch. And the second one was git rebase. And with that, this, this amount of information from these three videos is the basic information you need to be able to work with multiple developers using git as your version control system. So this is the typical central server with developers pushing from it like that and this is how a lot of projects work and it works pretty well so they push changes this guy fetches and rebases to apply those changes and then it works vice versa as well so this is kind of the equivalent to how subversion does it but in the git way so commits are always local so that gives us the that's actually a good thing because it means we can do more commits more often so less chance of failure um, and then we push when we're ready so the this develop developer two here only gets changes once developer one is happy that they're good enough to go to the central server whereas subversion that might not always be the case because commits are never local so that's going to wrap up this video and thanks a lot